Good morning, my name is Willie D, doing a quick rundown of my rig. First up, Pro 32 Sub 2. Two of them. Are they overkill? Probably. I know for packing into sedan, it's a little bit much. Um, but I like it. I'll probably only use one. Well, I definitely only use one for smaller gigs. Um, just moving from left to right here. Keyboard, Korg Nautilus, just trying it out. 61 key version. I love the sounds, very inspirational, especially creativity, creatively. It's a great instrument so far. I'm used to the, I've been using the Korg Triton for a long time and I uh, wouldn't say it's an upgrade, it's just different. Okay. Um, iPad, use that for my lyrics. Use four score on that guy, along with this pedal right here. Um, I'll automate the changes in Ableton, but uh, we'll get to that later. Um, moving down, VLX3 with the J, VLX3 Extreme, excuse me, has a bunch of great presets. I use, presets. I use uh, left and right for all my channels, for stereo, in my mix, uh, there, uh, in my ears, but uh, the audience will get stereo or mono based on, you know, what kind of gig it is. Um, I use this uh, compressor. Here, can you see that? Compressor and a JH, JHS pedal uh, for it's uh, for guitar, but I use it for bass. I really like the uh, the warmth that it gives and a little bit of saturation. I just run it pretty cleanly. You can kind of see there. Um, I should probably change my angles here. All right. There you go. Okay, so there. I label it. You'll notice because I. When I'm putting things together, I get really tired. Um, I have a ditto pedal on here. I got just to kind of test connections, and I got it really early uh, before I got anything that loops pretty much, and it just sits there. Uh, just in case I needed to test anything, or I haven't been really needing to use it lately. Um, Furman power strip goes to another Furman conditioner over there. Um, just moving, again, left to right here. Um, you know, this... Uh, 8x8 eight eight pad, twister, really like it, especially the tactile function on there. Um, use it with uh, Ableton. Ableton's pretty much my go-to for everything these days. I used to use Logic Pro and GarageBand. Still use GarageBand, but um, that's kind of the go-to now. Um, some HD 280 Pro Pros, two of those, just in case any mix. These stands are fantastic, or Hercules. Uh, stands. Um, it's great because I can just pop it in, in and out like that, and it secures it. Uh, it's great when I'm switching instruments, which I do a lot during my performance. This switch I've been debating on the use case. It's a Black Star custom MIDI controller, and um, I use it for looping and enabling loops because when you're playing guitar, it's kind of hard to, you know, right after you're done playing, hit this stop button. I know on the um, there's a way to set that on the, um, what's it called, the other pads here, the official one that Ableton comes out with, but I just use that for now. I'll use this one also for my VLX3 to enable some effects on there as well for some performances, but uh, yeah, that's been great to me so far, and I've been thinking about upgrading these, but it's like, eh, I've kind of gotten used to it to be honest with you. Probably upgrade later, maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, oh, uh, wall pedal. This guy uh, is really helpful. It's just a stand for your foot when you're playing guitar, when you're sitting down, but oh, such a lifesaver, especially when you don't want to always keep it on the wall pedal. Um, yeah, I run the SM58. That doesn't, doesn't focus, does it? Okay, well that's fine. SM58, there's two of them there. Um, I'm thinking of Potentially, once I get them, I ordered a Mark. They're hard to get, or really next to impossible. Um, they're out of stock, so it's the Mo2 Ultralight uh, Mark 5s is what I ordered, uh, used, uh, to replace this rack. This rack is about, I feel, it feels like 50 pounds at least. It's quite light if you don't include the case. But I include the case because I wanted to protect all the equipment. Uh, UI 24R sound by Soundcraft, 24 channels, 20 in, 20 out I think. No, no, there's more than that. 
24 and 24. Anyway, um, yeah, I just run all my inputs there. I use this for um, to run bigger bands. Um, so there's a group that I play with that, uh, you know, I'm using all these channels minus two. Uh, and they, they are running in-ears as well. Uh, they have their own personal ones. We just run wired for now. And it seems to work just fine, just a cost cost savings. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of the setup. Power play, a Bear, Behringer six channel, um, and uh, that's being fed by these. Uh, the AFS is in use. Uh, the, I don't know what it's called. Uh, just a frequency um, feedback suppression. There you go. Automatic feedback suppression. Um, and then it runs through this. This was originally for my computer servers, um, but I put it in a rack box and you're not supposed to use it outside. I use it outside. I actually ran this whole system standalone with just this guy. I didn't check to see that the input voltage was not zero. So this was actually just not working or working fully to power the whole band for a full three or four songs before it just shut down the power. A little unfortunate, but um, we ended up fixing that issue. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Again, still working with this guy. It's new, so I'm gonna, gonna figure that out. There's some guitars here that are missing. I keep them in cases since it's so dry out here. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you have any questions.